As a dietitian, the two questions I'm most frequently asked are, how many calories should I pack, and how much water should I drink? Well, the answer to number one, you can get from our how many calories you should pack video, and number two, I'm gonna talk about today, is to help you learn how to hydrate well while in the backcountry. Did you also know that hydration plays a role in how well you're gonna stay energized while backpacking? It really has something to do with whether or not you're gonna bonk or not. So, if you're new to our channel, my name is Erin Owens Mayhew. I'm a registered dietitian, an ultralight long distance backpacker, and the founder of backcountryfoodie.com. And I also live full time with my husband and our dog in a Sprinter van, which explains why we're here today. We just happen to be driving by on this forest road looking for our campsite for tonight, and I thought this couldn't be a better place to film a video about hydration. So, now back to the topic at hand. How much should you drink? Unfortunately, there's not a straightforward answer, just like how many calories you should have because there's a number of variables you need to keep in mind. The environmental conditions, your physical activity level, your metabolic rate, how much you sweat, how much fluid is in your diet, and how much fluid have you lost in other ways. Based on the amount of fluid you lose while backpacking, you can estimate how much you should drink. The simple way is to think about how much you sweat. So if you're a light sweater, the easy way to remember is about a half a liter to one liter per hour. If you're moderately sweating, a liter to a liter and a half per hour, or if you're a really heavy sweater, then a liter and a half to two liters per hour is recommended. However, remember all those variables you have to take into account, so these estimations could vary greatly. Now, why is hydration such a big deal while you're backpacking? Did you know that as little as 2% weight loss while backpacking can really affect your performance? Let's say you weigh 150 pounds, and a 2% weight loss is only three pounds lost. So losing as little as three pounds could really affect your performance, and make that epic trip not as enjoyable. The problem with getting dehydrated is that it takes so much work to get caught up. It's almost impossible. Reason why is by the end of the day, you need to make up 150% of the fluid loss. And I don't know about you, but I don't like getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom if I don't have to. So the key is to stay well ahead of the game and prevent yourself from getting dehydrated. And drinking enough water is also really important because it helps replenish your glycogen stores, which is where your body stores your extra energy. To prevent hitting the wall, replenishing your glycogen stores is critical. I actually provide an entire live stream talk about how to prevent bonking while backpacking, but for today, just know that staying hydrated plays a role in your energy level. Now you're going to ask, how can you tell if you're drinking enough if there are so many variables? The best thing to do is to know how much weight you lose. This is relatively easy to do on a day hike. You can go home and check to see how much weight you lost and compare how much you drank that day. Then that way you'll know, did you drink enough, too much, or not enough? so you can take that into your next hike to, as an estimate. Unfortunately, while we're backpacking, you don't have the ability to weigh yourself every day. So the best thing to do is to stay ahead of the game, like I mentioned, and drink more than you think you do. And one of the problems is that oftentimes when signs of dehydration kick in, it's actually too late because you're already dehydrated, you're behind the ball, and you're having to play catch up, like I mentioned before. So that's my quick intro to hydration in the backcountry. If you want to take a much deeper dive, Go check out our site, backcountryfoodie.com, where we have all sorts of resources. But today I want to end with how I stay hydrated while I'm backpacking. So I thought I'd show you how my water filtration is set up. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy over the Sawyer Mini, but it's actually my favorite filtration device. Um, the reason is, as you've probably seen in my other videos, and if you're a member of our group, you know that I'm impatient. I like to eat and drink as fast as possible so I can get the miles in and I can go to bed on time and get out of camp in the morning without spending a lot of time. So for me, I just drink out of it like a straw. My water bottles only ever have dirty water in them. I don't spend time filtering. I literally, like today, I would go by, I would scoop up the water, screw on the top, and keep moving. I wouldn't stop the filter. Um, and it works really well. To fill it up really easily, you just unscrew. And there's a reason why this is on here. It's a carabiner and a clip. It's because I can't tell you how many times that I've bent over and my water bottles come flying out of my backpack. And this has saved it on a number of occasions. So I know this is not considered truly ultralight, but for me, this is much better to do this than have me lose my water bottle. And also by having my water bottles on my side, I can keep a close eye on how much I'm drinking at a time versus having a camelback inside my backpack that I don't know how much I've had. Um, so I also keep the small black my other one on the side here. So then if we're on a really long carry, I'll have some extras in here and then this one here. And again, these are all dirty water bottles. I never ever filter. Um, and also the reason for that is because our recipes only require four to six ounces of water. 
And here's an example of one of our meals, the marinated chickpeas that I've talked about actually in our ultralight backpacking food um, video. And it only requires four ounces of water. So another thing that I do is you might see these marks on here. Is they're marked in four ounce increments. So if you truly want to go cold soak, not take a pot or anything, which this is a cold soak meal, you can just mark the increments on your bottle and you just pour out directly into here, four ounces. This has a zip top baggie, so I zip it up, throw it in my pocket or in my bag, let it sit there for half an hour, 45 minutes, and then my meal is ready without having any extra accoutrements. So that's a little bit about hydration in the backcountry and my own ultra, ultralight filtration setup. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or want to keep this conversation going, please leave them in the comment section below. I truly love backpacking nutrition and living in the wilderness. Um, so I'd love to talk to you soon. And until next time, happy trails.